Hello my soccer universe. Well, that was a little bit more exciting and with Paris being so impressive even without their big superstars, I think it's worth wearing one of my Paris shirts, uh, the white one, because they were playing in white yesterday, but more on that in a bit. Um, and yesterday, yeah, there were goals in there, um, very almost evenly distributed, and they came especially towards the end of the first half really fast, so I, it was a much more exciting uh, match day to watch uh, in that sense. Um, the early games I really saw only a little uh, of, and I didn't see any single goal live kit need attention to. Um, and to be honest, I was not that much into uh, those games. I have to say that Olympiacos against Spurs, I really found a very interesting jersey matchup because uh, the uh, light blue of Tottenham against the red and white of Olympiacos, that actually looked uh, interesting. I was thinking maybe the Navy could have done as well for uh, Spurs, but I think I liked the choice all overall. Um, Spurs got a Tony lead penalty uh, through Kane and then Lucas Moura equa uh, well not equalizes, doubles the lead in the 30th and you think they're well on, on the way. I was just before halftime, Daniel Pudense, I think that's his name, uh, pulls one back and then Olympiakos gets a, sort of a softish penalty. Um, it was a foul at the edge of the box. I have to watch watch it again, but at first it didn't seem to me. Uh, like one and Valbuena slots it home and it's 2-2 two, two, and this was for me not as I said it uh, stood 2-2, two, two. it was surprising, but the uh, Spurs gave up a two-goal lead. But again, they did it against Ars Arsenal and I don't know. I would say Arsenal is stronger than Olympiacos, but uh, who knows. Um, towards the end, uh, Spurs were pressing because, you know, in a group with Bayern, you might want to keep up a little bit um, and there was, they had a good chance where honestly, who was it, I uh, don't recall now, but uh, I think Lamela, he took the shot, if you just put in the cross uh, in, uh, this should have been a safe goal, but so it ends 2-2. Uh, we had also a draw in the second early game, which was between uh, Club Bruges and Galatasaray, where Bruges had many chances. Uh, I think they hit the bar um, once and a couple of other chances. They couldn't find the breakthrough. Uh, Galatasaray a little bit disappointing. I also found their jersey a little bit disappointing. I mean, Champions League jersey review is, com is coming up, but the two-tone grey and then the sleeves are not following. It just it looked odd and then with the dark red numbers, if you saw it from a distance, it actually looked a uh, light pink. So really, really, really weird. So that opens that group at nil-nil. Um, the other game, of course, then was the big one between PSG and Real Madrid. And off the bat again, jerseys. Um, I would have expected that it is uh, blue against white, which we got, but it was PSG playing in their white jerseys and Real Madrid in their navy away jerseys. From one side, I find it really weird. From the other, I have to say, I really like both of these jerseys a lot, so it was actually nice that they got an outing. I think the PSG jersey, I have to see it close, close up. I hear that the shadow pattern in it is a little bit weird. Um, but from the look of it, it this really looks like a sharp jersey. And the Real Madrid away jersey, I don't just don't like the three stripes here, but other than that, also a really nice looking one. Nice looking was probably what we have to say about PSG. Without Mbappé, without Cavani, without Neymar, a uh, thoroughly convincing performance. Uh, Di Maria getting two goals. So if the two stars up front or the three stars up front are, are, are playing, the other one can play too. Uh, and Di Maria really two nicely taken shots. Uh, Bale seemingly had them pulled one back, but uh, with a nice lob, but he used the hand and this we saw now the uh, new rule in play that the hand cannot be a part in scoring a goal. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think even before that it should have been uh, given as not a proper goal. Uh, I think they made a second goal uh, through Benzema in the second half. 
where um, I think it was Vasquez who came, uh, who was in an offside position, then ran tour to 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 the ball, but in the end left it for Bons Bozema, who slotted his home, but because he went there, it was an offside position. And then in, in stoppage time, uh, Meunier and Bernal <laughs> run towards goal, the two uh, wingbacks, and make it uh, 3 0. Except for the two goals that were not given, Real Madrid he didn't have any official shot on goal. This is the first time in the Champions League that that happened. I think there's a storm brewing in Madrid, and I'm not sure how well it will end this uh, this one. I think Zidane is not happy at Madrid, and hence we get a 3-0 loss at PSG. Not a bad thing per se yet. Because, you know, it is the biggest opponent. You will make it probably through to the next round. But uh, it is a sign. I, I I would say that Real Madrid, uh, at least in La Liga, will not be forced and will see in the Champions League. But, again, that's me making big conjecture going forward. Um, the other group, um, Group B, so to finish up those two, two groups, Bayern against uh, Gervenes Vesda. Javina Sesta was standing deep. Bayern was not very much inspired to give a good performance in a way. But, you know, it is hard against the defense. Just when uh, Javina Sesta just had one foray uh, forward, they were hit, basically, on the... I don't want to say counter, but, uh, you know, a little space opened, and then uh, going on the other way, uh, Coman could then convert... And it's 1-0 Bayern, but I was actually expecting much worse. But um, Juventus Vesta, I guess, they didn't want to be the slaughtering lamp that they were sometimes last season. And then it was a really iffy game for a long time. And Marcos Marin even had a great chance for uh, Belgrade that could have made it 1-1. Uh, but the right on the other end, Lewandowski in a typical strike strike is called the ball is bouncing off a defender towards the box and he just gets the tip of a toe and it just rolls past the keeper into the net and then in the end a nice um, combination from a free kick Alcantara and Müller uh, makes it 3-0 probably a little bit too high, I think a 2-0 was uh, probably the right result Group C was the group where I London said the most goals were scored, but we had the uh, biggest wins. Dinamo Zagreb absolutely dismantling Atalanta Bergamo. That is one that I did not expect. I mean, I knew that um, Dinamo Zagreb is not a weak team, but that they go on and beat Atalanta, that was uh, uh, surprising. They scored the first goal of the evening, the late evening, I have to say, uh, through Leo Vaz and then Orsic uh, gets three goals in the 31st, 42nd, and 68th. Really impressive performance. I just don't know why Dinamo Zagreb, I don't like their jerseys that much. I mean, the blue, that's all right, but then the yellow, that doesn't compute to me. I like that Atalanta's away jerseys. Speaking of uh, away jerseys, uh, Gervenas Vesta has very funny ones with the uh, like a navy and then red and white zigzag stripes. Um, interesting choices also uh, Schachter against Man City, uh, especially Schachter who doesn't have a black and orange stripes but has a two-tone orange with black pants, which I think was is, is a good change for them. Uh, again, we'll do a jersey review. The game was open or even, let's say, even for a while, and then when City made the um, uh, first goal where Mares uh, slots in a rebound, uh, it was well on the way how one would expect, and then in the end, then Gündogan makes it 2-0 before the half, and Gabriel Jesus gets a third one, and there could have been more goals, De Bruyne missing, uh, amongst others. Then, uh, let's go to the last group, uh, where Leverkusen had Tons of possession. I think they said around seven, more than 70% or something like that. Let's check that. 78% uh, possession. But Lok Moscow makes a goal. Um, and it was both individual errors from the Leverkusen side. Uh, the first one, a throw-in right in the, in the center that bounces um, from a Leverkusen player into the path of Grichowiak who just runs to her, to her a goal, yells, you are offside, don't watch it, and uh, slots it in. 
uh, one nil over this uh, with an own goal. <laughs> the German player for Lock uh, gives give Bayer the equalizer, but Barinov then again from a quick counter, and it was again, I think, a bounced ball that they could convert. So, I mean, uh, mistakes cost Bayer Lever Leverkusen, and they seem to be in dire straits in this group. Uh, because the other two, uh, Atletico Madrid and Juventus, and boy did those two play a game. I think that was actually the game of the evening. The result of the evening was a PSG against the Real Madrid, but the game of the evening was the other Madrid team against Juventus. Um, Atletico, very untypically, lots of power going forward, really um, trying to get the goal, and Juventus was hanging uh on the ropes so to speak but atletico could not find the breakthrough juventus found the breakthrough early in the first uh in the in, in the second half where it was a counter attack uh that over Iguain, he on on the side and of course ronaldo is in the, in the center binding three or four players uh and Iguain is not playing to ronaldo which i think in, in itself could have caused some ire if he wouldn't have found the beautiful pass onto the other edge of the box to Quadrado, who wiggles a little bit and then slots it home really nicely. Great goal to make it 1-0. And then just a few minutes later, in the 65th, Matuidi uh, slots home another one uh, to make it 2-0 Juventus. And you think that Juventus is stealing uh, the game here because Atletico had chances was really the more proactive team. Juventus hanging, let us say, back, defending, almost the old Juventus style. And uh, that was something that was not really, really expected. However, credit to Atletico, who really did not give up. And five minutes after they uh, got the 2-0, Savic, after Jimenez, cross makes it uh, 2 uh, one two from Atletico, so it's again game on, and I think it was important for them to really find this breakthrough, uh, especially after the chances they had already missed in the first half. And in the 90th minute, with a, after a Trippier corner, uh, Herrera, who just had come on, heads in the equalizer. Uh, Ronaldo at the very end just missed by a hair and could have really stolen the game for Juventus, but I think overall the draw it was. Uh, big fight. The only thing that I, I mean, from one side, I thought the jersey match was uh, pleasing to the eye because you know had the red, the white, and the blue. Juventus playing blue and white, uh, which again looks fine. I just don't find the blue necessarily much of a Juventus color. But then um, I thought that the jersey match, it was not easy to distinguish the teams because of the blue pants of Atleti. Uh, that was maybe the only, only downer, but I totally enjoyed this game on all levels. Whenever they got there, you could really see that this is a hard-fought game. That's all I want to see. So, uh, in the standings, I mean, again, doesn't say much. Uh, Group A, we have PSG with three and the two minus with one, Real Madrid at zero. Uh, so, we have to see the next game will uh, probably be uh, Real Madrid against uh, Club Bruges. Um, Bayern, similar situation, leads to, uh, Spurs is, of course, with uh, one point. At the away point, I mean, they still favor to move on there as well. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. I want to see, is, is it uh, Spurs against Bayern? Yes, Spurs against Bayern is the uh, next matchup there. So... There, Spurs probably needs to get some something to not uh, get themselves in trouble again. But Spurs are slow starters, so yeah. Uh, Group Z, we have two winners, Zagreb and City, and they meet in the next um, match at the Etihad. So um, we will see whether Dynamo is for real. And then uh, Locke is leading the group, Juve and Atletico uh, coming, uh, Juve playing against Leverkusen at home, so Atletico away to lock. That's also going to be an uh, interesting matchup uh, to see whether those two teams that really played a great game will in the end uh, cruise through this group as I would have expected from the get-go. Well, that ends the Champions League tonight. We have Europa League. I probably will only watch Lask. I'm not sure if I will watch the late games, but hey, let's see how it will go. But I find myself a little bit... Uh, short on sleep, so 
let's see where it will go. Uh, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment below what you thought about the games yesterday, uh, especially on the two big games, but you know, everything else I would appreciate very much. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.